Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're well fed, refreshed, hungry for more information, perhaps. Um, we're now going to have a, a, a roundtable discussion with alumni from different European funding and fellowship programs. Uh, they are representatives here from French programs, from the Marie Curie program. Uh, so we would like to invite the panelists to the stage, if we could. And uh, Susanna will moderate. The idea behind this session is that we want you to hear from your colleagues how do they find out about these programs in Europe, uh, what were the benefits of the program, uh, and what advice would they give you if you were interested in applying for one of these programs. So it's one thing for me to stand up here for Susanna and tell you about all these great European programs, but I think, I think if you hear it from people who've actually applied and been successful and come back and seen their careers uh, grow, it, it might be more, more, uh, more powerful for you. So uh, let me invite the panelists to, to the stage. Where are they? Ready, Chuck? Yeah? And Kim, and we were... Uh, where's Kim? Oh, there's we, okay. And Dr. Jibby? Where's Jibby? There we go, okay. Do you want to put up this? Do you want one more mic? So that? Good, thank you very much. So we're starting our very exciting panel discussion. I have to say I personally always uh, enjoy this part of the program the most because it's really exciting to hear about these individual experiences. Um, I have, of course, everybody's CV here in front of me, but I think rather than me introducing them to you, maybe I'll just invite them to just say a little uh, bit about themselves, but very briefly, maybe just your name and where you're working and where you went last on your last uh, mobility experience in Europe. Ruta Chuk. Uh, my name is Ruta Chak Rang Sibiwat. Um, currently, I'm a researcher at Faculty of Medicine, Jolangkorn University. Um, by that time, I involved with the Marie Curie program. I was uh, just finished my PhD. Actually, basically, I'm a veterinary. Um, I, I've got my PhD from Faculty of Veterinary Science, um, Cholongkorn University, and just right, uh, I went to Hungary for the, for, for for my uh, 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 thesis experiment. But just the last last year before I finished my experiment, my professor um, po uh, suggested me about this program, Marie Curie program. But the program was um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry. Industry Academia um, Partnership Pathway, IPAA. So that means I can work together with the academy path, uh, partner in Copenhagen and also with the uh, 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 company in Hungary. So the project was two, four years uh, period from 2008 to 2012. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sili Pen, I'm from Mahidon University. Uh, I'm a linguist and lecturer at the uh, Institute for Languages and Culture of Asia. Uh, my work is about the uh, language revitalization, documentation, and multilingual education uh, for the ethnic groups in Thailand. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vichitra Wong Pomrat. I just graduated my PhD in the collaborative program between uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, King Mongkut Institute of Technology, Lat Grabang, and uh, doctoral school in MAPDE, uh, specialized on mechanic material, civil engineering, and electrochemistry, University of Grenoble, France. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Kim Fuyon Panit. I just recently graduated from University of Montpellier in France with a scholarship from Franco Thai, which is in a government scholarship. And now I'm working on my own business, starting a starting business. Hi, I'm GB. I am a researcher at a biotech, and I partake in uh, um, Uraxis Science Lab and um, uh, Thai Franco. And I just recently got uh, Marie Curie, but haven't gone 
through that process yet. But uh, I'm work, um, my project is uh, making a vaccine for pigs. If you want to know more detail, you can go on YouTube and search for Pigs Don't Cry, then all my project is on there. Thank you so much. So a wide uh, array of experience, uh, France, Hungary, Copenhagen and Denmark, you've been to the UK, and Jibi will be off to France as well. Oh, yes, it'll be at Institut Pasteur in Paris. Institut Pasteur in Paris, no less. Excellent. So, um, of course, you're a very experienced researchers, and I think we'll probably jump right in with the questions that are most important to you. Maybe I'll start with you, Jibi. Jibi, you've just been awarded the Marie Curie Fellowship, the individual yes. fellowship. What do you think makes a successful application? Um, I personally, I think they like my, um, I put on dissemination that I would make a, a Facebook, Twitter, YouTube account for to promote my project in the Marie Curie Fellowship. I think that's that's one thing that I stand out because I I think uh, a lot of uh, proposal don't really just have a general dissemination that they um, they want to um, go to a conference and publish, but I think since the social media become um, very important in our everyday lives, so mm -hmm. I, that's that's why I put it in in my proposal. And also, I think because of um, the host institute is pretty uh, well known, and my project uh, PEDV is um, pretty urgent. It's the the uh, porcine epidemic diarrhea virus that um, spread through Asia, and now it went to the U.S. So I think if the project is successful, it will create a high impact. So I think that's the the the, the thing that they like about my proposal. Thank you. So besides the excellent idea that you clearly had, it's the impact that is uh, of interest. We mentioned that earlier before. Ratuchak, you've also gone on a Marie Curie Fellowship. How did you go about writing the proposal? Um, actually, we, in my case, I didn't find a host. The host was already organized. But so we have to sit down and, uh, <clears throat> and discuss about the topic that we should we should do, and because of the project is IPAA, so that means we have to transfer the knowledge and skill and the mobility among uh, uh, between the researcher, between the institute. And so, <clears throat> because of the proposal involved using the human embryonic stem cells, human embryonic stem cells, so um, it's quite uh, a sensitive issue. So we have to, 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 to develop the, uh, the, the, the proposal that show to the, to, the, to the program, to the European Union, that um, how can we transfer um, the, the, the project that work on mouse in Hungary, pig in Denmark, and human in Thailand. So, so we have to make it uh, clear and to, to show them that uh, how it created impact. And also, of course, because uh, embryonic stem cells and stem cells technology is quite new, I think that, that's a, a, a point that they could get this, this scholarship, this funding. So the key, you think, is to work very closely with your host when it comes to your proposal writing? Yes, yes. Because it, it took like six months to develop the proposal together. Thank you. Your colleague has uh, been on a Newton Fund. Yes. How exactly uh, did you go about uh, realizing that mobility? Uh, uh, actually, I, at first, I have to acknowledge my professor uh, Professor Suilai Premsilas, uh, she is, is my major advisor and uh, also my teamwork about the uh, uh, language revitalization. And our the, the very important project is about the multilingual education in the south, southern Thailand. And at that time, uh, we have support by the, the Thailand Research Fund. And then uh, last three years, uh, we have got the scholarship from the European Union. So we have the, the, the chance to go to uh, the UK and Spain to see the uh, institute to, for, for the work about the particular education. So that, 
we start to know the other partnership uh, in UK. That is Peter Austin, Peter uh, Professor Peter Austin uh, in the SOAC, University of London. And then uh, we know about the Newton Fund, the uh, British Council, and uh, about the uh, is research telling <laughs> research telling fun is about the workshop for uh, Thai uh, Thailand people and the UK to work together and to uh, develop the younger researcher uh, we got the, that scholarship for two years and then uh, for myself I apply for the mid career research uh, from the Newton Fund, and this year uh, I got the travel can that is continued from the research sharing. So this uh, we have continued to work with SOAC, that uh, our partner. Thank you. And then we have three recipients of the Franco Thai Research Fellowship or the scholarship here with us. Maybe if I'll ask the two of you, what do you think made your application to the scholarship successful? Uh, for me, it's about the connection. Uh, my Thai advisor at KMITL used to work with uh, my French professor in France and they work on the same project with my thesis. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, my, my Thai advisor suggested me to apply for the scholarship. And we, make, we write some proposal together and apply. Uh, we wrote, in fact, we, we work on material that can develop uh, the electrical generator. And I think, the best way to get the scholarship is the, your motivation. In my, in my opinion. Kim, maybe you can add and also tell us how you think this scholarship has helped you on, uh, on your uh, career development track. First of all, my, uh, the, the chance for me to go to France is because of the connection, the collaboration with, between the Gazette universities and my supervisor in France, Dr. Tim, in the Institute of the Hershey School of Development, or IRD. Uh, that's a good chance for me that, uh, to do some research together with the institute like IRD, because the IRD is an institute that have a lot of col collaboration with the other companies, such as for me. I'm working together with the companies such as Parmelit, which have a branch around all around the world, even in Latin America or in Thailand. This made me have a chance to visit, like, for example, when I have to go to collect some sample, I went to Ecuador. This is a chance that I never have been for me to, if I'm working in Thailand, I think. This made me see, like, have a chance to see the world in a different way. Thank you. So already some very useful advice here. Work closely with the supervisor, work closely with your research partner. Networking is very important. Make sure that you meet all the criteria, impact, make sure that people are aware what the impact is. Evaluation, of course, is very uh, important as well. I think we're going to open now the floor for you to ask questions. And maybe I'll invite Mr. Stéphane Roy from the French Embassy first to give us a little bit of insight about the evaluation criteria of those uh, applications. Thank you very much. And thank you for the uh, free French alumni to be here. I'm actually very confident uh, of talking about them because I didn't evaluate them. It was my predecessor who did that. But we use basically the same criteria, which is, I uh, mentioned that earlier, which is the motivation later. Uh, if it's for us, the uh, scholarship program, or for the supervisor in France, everything relies on the way you present yourself the way you actually show your interest either for to do a, a fellowship like a GBA or to do actually a PhD or a master is how to present yourself and how to show the interest in what you want to do. Uh, when we evaluate the people, we look at not only what they have done, GPA, the universities, which are very important, of course, but also the motivation to go abroad, 
to go to France. And of course, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with your master? What are you going to do with your PhD? And what are you going to do with your fellowship? Because it's, uh, I will talk about that later, but it's actually money from the French government and from the Thai government. And we want to be sure that this money is used wisely. So the motivation is the key word. And how to present your project, how to present yourself, are actually the key words in our evaluation process. Thank you so much. Now, we have the opportunity now for you to ask questions. Who would like to ask the first question? I think, oh, there's a lady. Yeah? Uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience. So my question is that, could you recommend uh, like the preparation process, if you could turn back time, would there be anything that you would do to make it easier to get uh, the funding? Thank you. Yeah, the microphone Kim, is yeah. with me, so I have to answer that. First of all, now we have the, uh, in the science, we have some, some community that called the research gate. I, I think that everyone knows that. And most of the people in Europe, European, or the scientists in European use that, use that site to make to present themselves. Now I think that that is the first step. You go and you find some researcher that you want to make a collaboration with them. And then after that, if you go to that point already, you will easily to find some, like the, the grant that will support you from France or even from European country. I think start from that point, it's gonna be good, good, good point to start. JP, do you have some advice? Because for you it's probably most recent. I would say, I mean, keep yourself check on the deadline and what's going on because sometimes I know we, we researcher we just be in the lab and forgot about everything else. And because once I realize the deadline, I only have like a month and a half to prepare it. So if I can turn back time, <laughs> I would. I would prepare myself maybe, I mean, sooner. I mean, um, I, I, I would need at least three months so it's not too stressful. And um, I think internet is it's a very valuable source because I, I was writing the, the, the proposal for a month and then I realized that they're out there say um, how to write, it's a, it's a guideline to say how to write Marie Curie a successful or a winning, I'm, I'm not sure, I forgot the title, but yeah, I, after that, a month, I realized that there's, there's the guidebook, like, so I go back to the guidebook and I look line by line with, with my proposal and I realized that it's completely not it. <laughs> so I, I have to rewrite everything in maybe in two weeks, so. If I can turn back time, I would keep myself informed of all the deadline. Like maybe in the beginning of the year, you can just, you know, put on your calendar like which grant deadline is on when, and then you can kind of remind yourself because then once you realize it, then it won't be too late or it won't be too soon. It won't create stress, too much stress for you. Thank you. So start early with your applications. I think you've done it in six weeks, which is uh, a great feat in itself, I think. I think a year is probably more realistic. And then I think this is very important. Use the tools that are out there. There's lots of guidebooks and instructional uh, brochures on how to successfully apply. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just make sure you look at the material that's out there. And um, Kim was making a very good point looking for a host. You, you use the, the tools that are out there to identify a, a good partner. And you mentioned ResearchGate, but of course the Euraxis portal is also a great source for you to identify someone. Any more advice? What do you think? What would you do differently? Um, firstly, I would think, uh, what is the, the idea to get back, if I can turn back my time? <clears throat> because by the time I always think uh, to apply for the scholarship proposal, I always fear with writing a proposal, what to start, how to start. But actually, the idea is the first thing for me. What should I do and to, to show uh, uh, to the reviewer? And the, part, and the other thing that I think is very important is uh, 
when, 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 when writing the proposal, not to think about myself or ourselves. Think about the person who's going to read or review this proposal. If that the language we're going to use is easy to understand, diagram or whatever, to make, uh, things easier for the other person to read. I think that, that, that's the point. I think it's quite important for me. Do you have anything to add, the ladies? Uh, for me, I have a suggestion for the new researcher. Uh, if you are a new researcher, you have to start to work with your senior uh, advisor or your senior uh, colleague uh, in your faculty or <laughs> department because uh, they will have potential to apply for the big uh, scholarship and uh, they have the good relationship for the partner and then uh, you work with, with them for a team and then uh, we will we, we have the chance to know the other partner or the foreigner when we, we work like a workshop. Uh, and, and then uh, we learn from the, our senior colleague how to write the proposal or the, the idea about the the, the title of the research project. Uh, after that, uh, you follow the 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 grant. Uh, what what grant about uh, for just researcher or the team for the the big project? And then you you see what is type of, of scholarship is fit for you or suitable for your institute. And then you try, try to write first. Uh, I think uh, for Newton Fund or British Council have the guideline is very really useful for our apply. Uh, and then uh, we follow that the, the guideline. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you looking at the guidelines, I think both of you agree, looking at the guidelines and putting yourselves in the shoes of the evaluator so make sure that they understand uh, what you're trying to say. So I think a good tip is always to have someone, some of your senior colleagues maybe go through your proposal to read it for you and to make comments so that you make sure not only yourself understand it, but everybody else does as well. And I think what you said as well, make sure that the scholarship fits. It should be realistic. It shouldn't be something that is only a partial match. Vichitra, anything that you would do differently? Yes. Uh. <laughs> Not only the scholarship you have to concern, but, all, but also the university. Because, uh, for example, for my scholarship, Fungo Thai Scholarship, uh, Fungo Thai Scholarship is like uh, funding support, but if you got Fungo Thai Scholarship but the university doesn't accept you to be a PhD student, you cannot go. So first, you have to check the qualific qualification or requirement of the university before applying. That is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in my case, uh, Franco Thai scholarship required nothing special, but my doctoral school require one journal, scientific journal, uh, ISI journal, I, I think, Oh, you know about that. For, um, for the PhD candidate who graduated your master in foreign countries. So if you don't have, you, I think you have to apply for other doctoral school. Thank you. So make sure that the university that you're choosing yes. as a host is uh, the correct one for you. I think yes. this applies to any, any scholarship. Um, any other questions? Some great advice. There's another question there. Thank you. So thank you for coming here and also sharing your experiences. Um, my question is actually not about the preparation, but um, after you receive this funding in the fellowships. Um, so how having this like funding and the fellowship 
affect or like impact your career direction. Like for example, academic researcher, industrial researcher, um, maybe you are doing a business on yourself. So uh, that's something like I'm just uh, wondering. Uh, one more question also about life direction is you had you all had a great experience in European countries. Um, does it make you feel you want to go back to Europe or you want to uh, be in uh, Thailand? So I think that's something like that. I just want to know that experience. Thank you. Yes, I want to go back. <laughs> of course. Uh, in fact, actually, it's difficult to to live abroad uh, because the, the you know the nature, culture, people, climate, food, everything is different from our countries. But we learned many things more. Uh, something I guess from France is more than certificate, but the experience that you can buy for it. You can just you cannot pay for it. So if I have a chance, I will go back for sure. <laughs> Kim. Well the question that you said about is it affect to the directions of the career in the future? I think it's exactly yes for me. If I, I see a lot of will from many countries, like I have a chance to visit a lot of countries in European and also in, in Latin America, this makes me decide to be do my own business, not go into the academic things. Because I feel that in academic things is not like the thing that we can answer everything. And when, when you do some own, your own business, you can do what you want if you have some enough money or something like that. And for the question that you ask about do you, uh, I, do you want to go back for, to the country? This is exactly for sure. But the Thailand for me is uh, the way my family stay together. So I think it's one point that make me stay here. Thank you. Jibi. Uh, OK, there's several questions. Um, hope I get everything. Um, first was the direction it's definitely because it gave me opportunity to work at Institute Pasteur in like in my entire um, research life after graduated I never thought I would have a chance to to work at Institute Pasteur because I mean I graduated from the US and I have no connection in in Europe so with Thai Frango it's opened up opportunity for me to go there and and work there, and also what else? Uh, I I like the con I like France a lot. I like Paris. I still cannot speak French. It's difficult, but I think in the next two years I'll I'll learn for sure. But I I I love Thailand, so I want to be back here, and I have obligation to come save the pig piggies in Thailand. So. <laughs> That will be my, my main goal. So I, I, I would love to go back and visit because I have some friends. Oh, yeah, and it's give me opportunity to have friends and networks and everywhere. Because um, Paris, you have a lot of people from, from Europe, all over Europe. So I have a Spanish friend, Italian friend. So it just it's opened up me big time, like globally. So. Thank you. Dr. Ziripan. For me, uh, maybe different from other people because I not, uh, was not finished from the foreign country. Uh, I was finished from Manhido University in Thailand. So I uh, have no experience uh, in, in foreign language at all. But we just have the chart period. Uh, to visit like uh, Singapore or Chinese uh, China, so uh, but but the next next maybe in this year in in the end of this year I when I got uh, the travel plan I have uh, six months in UK, so uh, I quite worry but but I think <laughs> I can. I can uh, 
stay in the UK because I would like to find a new experience and I try to learn more about my academic area. Uh -huh. And I think it may be useful to, to make the connection to other university and that is the good chance to uh, apply for another scholarship. Thank you. Ruta, what about you? If I, if I remember the, the questions well, um, <laughs> the, first, the first question, um, if, if uh, Mercury uh, uh, program impact my career, right, after I come back, um, very much, first of all, uh, recognition. Uh, because we got this scholarship, I mean, I used to work with the Mercury program, and when I come back, uh, my institute, Jurong uh, University, they, they, they try to find who have been uh, applying, who have experience with the scholarship. And so I could uh, give some suggestion. We can get called together. We have some community and we can uh, 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 explain to the new uh, uh, researcher or the new team who would like to participate with, with the other uh, uh, European institution. Uh, I mean, recognition. And second, because of the program that I enrolled was um, Industry Academic Partnership. That's a very good program because I can work with uh, academy pa pa uh, partner and industrial partner. So that means the way of thinking, because I'm now in the academy, the way of thinking changed me a, a lot. Because many times we do research for publication, but in the same time, how can we change that publication to uh, a products? And especially now uh, in Thailand, we, we have a, you, you might have heard about the project of startup or setting up a new company. So I think the experience that I, 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 I learned from, from, from Mercury Action is quite, quite good. And the second question was, uh, if I would like to return, of course I would like to return, I would like to go back to Europe. And I would like to go back to the, the, to the, to the institute or to the country that I've never been. For example, Italy, I've never been there, even though I stayed there, I've never been to Italy. But anyway, um, what I would like to go back now is to, to work more with the company and to, to share the idea and how can we develop a similar company like in Thailand and to make a link between a, a academy in Thailand and the company in Europe. Thank you very much. Who else has a question for our panelists? There's a gentleman. Well, in, in asking this question, I assume that we all have a desire to be useful to the society that we're in. How do you feel about the opportunities for you to use your knowledge here in Thailand compared to the country that you were um, at? Um, to use my knowledge here in Thailand compared to, to use it in Europe. Um, well, actually, <clears throat> some, just to make it, it easy to, to follow, just some, some sample, for example, some case, some sample that it, it can find easily in Thailand. And, but we don't have equipment, we don't have a skill and knowledge, so we can exchange with a, with a European partner, and that can, can develop uh, 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 our research field in, in Thailand. Kim, maybe you want to answer, because you're just branching out as an independent researcher. First of all, the knowledge that I gained from the European country, if I want to adapt something to Thailand, first of all, I have to think about the budget. It's not the same thing. We have to find some budget for support us. And for the second thing, it's about the equipment. The knowledge that I have gained from European country, maybe some equipment is already exists in European country, but in Thailand, it's not like the, the gentleman said. It's, it's still lacking. So I ha we have to use that knowledge to improve Thailand also for, for that point. Chippy, would you like to add something? Um, for my uh, project, it's a collaboration project. Is um, We have the knowledge that from Thailand, which is um, our research in PEDV. And when I was in Institute Pasteur for a, Thai fun a fungal Thai fellowship, I saw that at Pasteur they have a platform 
which is, can, uh, can be combined with my uh, knowledge of PDV and we can make a vaccine pro for PDV. So I think in my case, uh, we, we kind of combine knowledge that I use my knowledge from here combined with the, the knowledge that I get from Pasteur. And also um, in Europe, PEDV is not, um, has no outbreak there yet. So if this collaboration project is uh, successful, we can use the, this vaccine to prevent PEDV in Europe as well. So this, I think the, both knowledge can be used both in both Asia and in Europe. So. Oh, some great examples of how joining forces helps you tackle transnational problems. Excellent. Any other questions? Simon Grimley. We had an event that, that Dr. Jimmy participated in for the Marie Curie Individual Fellowships. It's, the, it's this business of, of what, you know, if you don't know a partner in Europe and you're writing to them, the importance of also bringing something to the table. Could you, could you just, yeah, I think it's a very important um, point. Because um, like I said, I graduated from the US, so I don't really have any partner in, in Europe. And I remember in 2012, I sit in one of the FP7 introduction thing in Le, Le Meridian in Ceylon. I remember I was one of you and just like, I have no idea what's going on. I see there's a lot of fellowship. So I keep that in mind, I make one dot. And then um, once I join uh, Euraxis, then I see opportunity that because uh, the Science Lamb, the winner of the Science Lamb, I get to go to Brussels. So I asked Suzanne to um, connect me with Institut Pasteur since I, I'm already in Europe, so like why not just visiting? Um, and then I visit Institut Pasteur, I get to talk to uh, several uh, people and I mean, so it, that's, that's just another dot. And then I heard about Thai Franco and it was like, oh, that's the line between the, my two dots that I can just um, connect that to the two dots. So. Um, so that's, that's my experience to find, to find a partner. But if you don't have, uh, you don't know anybody like I do and you don't have um, your access, you, you do have your access to help, yes. But I mean, if you, uh, you can just, um, like, like if you wanna email them to say like, hey, I w I'm interested in your lab, it might not be very interesting to them because like, why? Why would I, um, if you don't, if, you, if for me, I, I'm a young researcher, I don't have a, a big CV. So maybe, so I use Thai Franco Fellowship in my pocket and I was like, hey, um, so like I say, bring something to the table. I emailed um, the, the person I met in Pasteur. I said, hey, there's a Thai Fran a Franco Thai Fellowship um, but I need a host. Would you like to try me out? <laughs> you know, like, just, would you like? We can, we can join together. I need a host. I have a, I have money. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this, this small grant. Uh, one month, I saw. I, I, I came late. I'm so, sorry, but I, I came in when there's the Austria grant. The one month, two months, three months. It's, it's a great grant to to get because then you can um, you can try them out they can try you out like you so you can know the lab and then you can get connection you can get network that way you can find partner very very easily i think if you have nowhere to start you can start with the the small grant and they would like it if you just say that hey i have a fellowship we no i have fellowship that we can together apply so it, so this case they don't have to spend anything um, they get uh, good labor which is us so <laughs> <laughs> and then you can try each other out and then maybe further you can uh, submit the bigger grant so that that's my theory hope it's helped thank you so much
So I think we heard it uh, in different forms from the panelists today that you kind of need to also make sure that your potential host is interested in you. And I think these little grants, as you said, are a great opportunity. But I think what Rutachuk said is, is also very important. You need to um, make sure that your idea resonates with the person you want to work with. It needs to be something where they don't have to make a stretch because they are as busy as you. Uh, and they, they, they also want to get something out of the relationship, so presumably publications and some research output. So that's important in finding the right fit for what you have in mind. I think looking at the clock, we have one um, time for one more question. If someone has something urgent. The panelists are of course here for the rest of the day, I guess, but otherwise I would just ask them to round up um, with a one sentence. I mean, you see all these bright young people here today. What's your key message to them? Not necessarily application advice, because you've shared that, but you know, someone who's still hesitant, what is your, your motivating message to them? We start on this side here, maybe. Um, maybe I need some time to think about the motivation. <laughs> well. In my, my motivation is that um, I always use this word and to teach my student as well. Try to get out of the box. Because if you keep staying in the laboratories, looking in your microscope, writing a, propose, uh, writing a publication, submit, everything will be like this. Just get out, meet the new people, talk with somebody else out of the lab. For example, even the cleaning lady. You will learn a lot of things from the cleaning ladies. And that's it. My word is get out of the box. Uh, I think your intention is very important. If you have uh, your intention, what would you like to do for your, yourself? Uh, you just try, try and try, and you uh, should uh, dare to uh, open your mind to uh, uh, write to other people that you find from the internet, from the university or the faculty that uh, do the, the research or work similar to you, and you uh, advise yourself to, to them. Maybe uh, someone maybe see your <laughs> intention and uh, you can work together. Uh, I agree with them to open your mind. And for me, my motivation is, I think we need to think about how to develop the better world for me. I work, I research something not only for publish a publication, but it could, it should change the world. So, if you have a big inspiration, I think you can do it good, do it very well. <laughs> For me, now I'm most related to the, the company, so my like, idiom is something like, when you see any chance, grab it, don't let it go. I, I feel like the EU access is one of the chance, when you see any chance on the website or interesting, you grab it, you apply for it, and then if you cannot, maybe it's the chance will come you only one time. If it, you lose it, it's gone. For me. Um, for me, would be if you want something, ask for it. I mean, I mean, not just all the time. Like, if you wonder about something, if you're interested in something, don't be afraid to ask for it. Like, I asked Suzanne, can I go see a lab? In, in, in Europe, so it's like, I, I want something, I ask for it, I just don't be afraid for the rejection, just try it, you know. Ask for it and always bring something to the table and you will always be welcome as well. Well, thank you very much. I think that was very inspirational and very, very useful. And with this, I think a big round of applause for our panelists today.